Welcome to day two of Curved Mirrors. I am going to go over the important components of how we use curved mirrors to kind of predict where the image of something is. And it will be a little bit different from day one because we will be looking at a specific type of mirror. And that mirror is a diverging mirror or convex. So when we think about diverging, recall from yesterday, diverging means that the light rays will hit the mirror and none of them will intersect with each other. So like yesterday, with regards to our concave mirrors, when something is traveling parallel to the perpen or the principal axis, when it hits that mirror, it would reflect through the focus. Now, the same thing kind of happens here. However, as you'll see in a second, we don't use the actual reflected ray to determine the trajectory of the, I guess, the reflection. Because at the end of the day, recall from diverging mirrors, none of the light rays will ever intersect with each other. So how would we get an image if none of those reflected rays ever intersect with each other? Well, we can utilize the understanding of those virtual rays or those not actual real rays. Does everyone see the dotted lines there? They represent, the dotted lines here, they represent the idea that even though the reflected rays, which are traveling off in this direction, let me get my pointer out, which are traveling off in this direction, okay? Even though those reflected rays don't actually intersect with each other, we can use those virtual virtual rays, those dotted lines, to help us determine where the image is. So again, just like with yesterday, any time we have a incident ray that's traveling perpendicular to the principal axis, the reflected ray will bounce off of it. And obviously, because it's a diverging mirror, they'll diverge and never intersect. But those dotted lines, those virtual rays, they still all travel through the focal point. Okay, questions. <clears throat> Anyone have any questions about that yet or not yet? Okay, so no one's asking. I will continue. So as I stated earlier, let me hide this chat. So as I stated earlier, parallel rays spread apart and diverge into different locations. But those virtual, the dotted lines, those virtual rays, they still follow those three rules that we set up yesterday where they all kind of converge on the focal point if the incident ray is traveling parallel to the principal axis. So just like our rules yesterday, we're going to look at some rules with regards to convex mirrors. So with convex mirrors, if the incident ray from the top of the object is parallel to the principal axis, it's going to reflect through F, but it's not the actual reflected ray. It will be that virtual, those dotted lines from the top of the object as if through F. So going through F, it will still reflect parallel to the principal axis. And from the top of the object as if through C, well, it's still going to reflect back through C. However, like I stated in this initial diagram, all of them will be those dotted lines, those virtual rays. They are not actual light rays that are going and reflecting in that manner. So the rules all still stay the same, but not quite. So what does that mean? Well, let's take a look at an example. So in this example, we have a convex mirror. We have an object that is in front of the mirror. 
And my first light ray, my first incident ray that I draw is going to be traveling parallel to the principal axis. So it will reflect like that. Now, how did I get that trajectory? Well, I got that trajectory for the reflected ray by understanding that regardless of the mirror type, I'm still going to have a reflected ray that travels through F if the incident ray is parallel to the principal axis. So I get that by drawing those dotted lines through F and then traveling upward to help me determine where that reflected ray will bounce. Same thing goes for when I draw that light ray through F. If that light ray were to continue to draw through, and I'll do examples later if you're not with me. That's okay. Don't worry. I'll draw. I'll do examples later. My light ray goes through F, and it will reflect back parallel to the principal axis. And then I have my dotted lines going through here. So now I'm able to determine where the image is. In this case, we have a virtual image, virtual image, because it, the image is appearing on the other side of where the object was or on behind the mirror. Okay. Questions. That was a lot to take in. I'm going to still do a lot of, of, of examples with you all, but I just want to make sure we're all on the same page with regards to how I did that one example. So will the image always be upright? Well, we're going to do a couple of examples and we'll figure that one out and determine if they will always be upright. But keep that in mind, okay, Jaira? Keep that thought in mind. At the end of the day, don't assume that we'll always be upright. We always have to determine by drawing our incident and our reflected rays. All right, so a couple of questions. So just give me one second. Let me pull this back up. So Marie asks, how do we know which direction the rays will go in? Well, uh, I'm going to do a couple of examples, Marie, and hopefully we'll start to see it by then. But the way we know the direction is by remembering those rules. If it travels parallel to the principal axis, its reflected ray will go through F. But in this case, because it's a convex mirror, not a concave mirror, we don't know the actual trajectory of the real reflected ray because we can't draw it going through F. However, those dotted lines help us to chart the trajectory of that reflected ray. So are the dotted lines the rays bouncing back? Not really. The dotted lines are where the light would go if it wasn't a fully reflective surface. If it wasn't a fully reflective, and this is important when we do lenses next, because the fully reflected surface bounces 100% of that light off of it. If it wasn't fully reflected, if it wasn't fully reflective, the dotted line would be the trajectory of the, ref the, the new ray. Yes, exactly. It would, it would bend. That's exactly what would happen. That's why prisms and that's why lenses behave in the, help light behave in the way that it does. Because at the end of the day, it helps to, yeah, it helps to, um, yeah, deflect the light. All right, any other questions? Because then I'm going to do a couple of examples with you all, and then it's going to be, hopefully you've all taken a look at that uh, Explorer Learning Gizmo account. Ignore this. You can ignore my, sorry, my students can ignore this. I've already set you up. I'm not sure about Miss Nitz and Miss Pullman's class, but I'm pretty sure based on what I read from both of them, they have it either set up for you or there's a way for them to for you to all set it up. But my students, I shared that document with your login information. You'll utilize that. Okay, so Sophia asks, how is are these different from concave? So that's an excellent question. We're gonna look at how convex and concave mirrors differ. So Recall, I'm just going back. I mean, there's an easier way to do this, isn't there? Da, da, da. So the rules are all still the same. Actually, I got a better idea on how to show this. Because I'm not, because I've already shown, yeah, these are just some examples. Sorry, Sophia, I'll get back to your question in like two
Why is this not working? All right, folks, can you hear me again? This is weird. I don't know why it keeps disconnecting me. Sophia, can you recopy that question? Because I was in the process of, of answering it and um, or like talking about it, and now I can't see it anymore. So if you could just re... Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, so how are these two different? Okay, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, with regards to the two differences here. So convex mirrors produce a smaller upright virtual image. Convex mirrors also show a wide range of view with their smaller virtual image. It's always going to be smaller, upright, and virtual for convex. So just coming back to Jira's question, that's how it will always behave. With concave, it won't always behave like that. It's going to be a little bit different sometimes, okay? But we'll really, 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 really get the hang of it when we look at some examples. So I'm going to do that now. All right, let me get this exiting. Stop sharing. Okay. A window. Oh. go Ta -da. all right so let's take a look at some examples let's just make this yeah perfect okay so I'm gonna draw two examples and hopefully it will help us to understand it a little bit better and then if we have questions we can go over those questions okay first actually no I'll do a con vex Okay, first, da, da, da. so there's the, da, da, da. my C is here, my F is here. All right, so let's draw our first image after I take a look at, oh, yep, just you cat saying hello. All right, so here is my object. We'll use an arrow again just because it makes things quite easy. Now, if you recall from yesterday's with regards to concave mirrors instead of convex mirrors, and I'll just show where the reflective surface is by doing that. So we have our object here. This object is who knows how far away it is from the mirror. But we can determine where the image is based off of those rules that we know for concave and convex lenses. So let's draw our first incident ray. I'll use this color. And we know that if it's going parallel to the principal axis, the reflected ray will go through F. But there's a problem. And that problem is, geez Louise, I can't write on my tablet. That's my problem. All right, good enough. So that's the direction of light travel. OK, so there's a problem, though. That reflected ray can't go through like this. If it was able to, we would have no problem. We know that it's going to go through that way. But it doesn't. It can't. And it can't because that mirror, that reflective surface, bounces the light off perfectly. But what we can use from this information, oops, let me get this small. We can use this as a way to plot our trajectory. We can use the dotted line that would have been the path, right? That would have been the path of that reflected ray if it wasn't a fully reflective surface. And we can use that dotted line to plot the trajectory of the actual reflected ray. So that purple light ray is our reflected ray. We used the information. Yeah, so remember, Sophia, the rule states, the rule states if it's traveling parallel to the principal axis. So the rule is if it's traveling parallel to the principal axis, the reflected ray will reflect through F, but it can't. It can't move through F. The dotted line just tells us the path it would have taken 
if it was possible to go through the mirror, but it's not. So we use that dotted line. So we use that dotted line to help us understand that this is the path of our reflected ray. And we can do that with several different rays. So we can go right through F. If it was going to go this, it would have gone all the way through from that, that from that, um, yeah, would have gone all the way through, but it doesn't. It stops here. Doo -doo -doo. And recall, if it's traveling through F, if it's traveling through F, the reflected ray will be parallel to the principal axis. But it doesn't. It can't go parallel to the principal axis because that means that it goes through the mirror, which it can't do. So we use that again as our trajectory. That's going to be our dotted line. Doo -doo -doo. And it will help us to find the path of the real reflected ray or the actual reflected ray. So there's that reflected ray. And you'll notice the dotted lines have a point of intersection. So those dotted lines not only help us to determine the path of the reflected ray, but they also help us to determine where the image will be. And so now I know that the top of my arrow is going to be at the top where the point of intersection between those dotted lines are. So my image will appear here. All right. Questions about that example that I just did? Why is the top of the arrow going to be at the intersection instead of at the bottom? Uh, the principal axis, Marie, the principal axis operates as our um, reflective surface. Okay. So our reflective surface, so Ryan asked, can you go over step two again? Um, yeah, I'll do, I'll do another example, Ryan. Don't worry. So the, the principal axis ref operates as our reflective surface. If the point of intersection of those reflected rays is on top, or above that plane, then it's going to be upright. If it's below that plane, like we saw in all of those uh, concave mirror examples, if it's below the plane, it will be upside down. OK, so Ryan, I'm going to do another example. And um, hopefully, we'll be able to see how that works. So I'll just erase. Do, do, do. Okay, okay, okay. Da, da, da. All right. So let me take a look at what some of these questions are. Uh, so Jaira asks, so you can't have an upside down image above the principal axis. Correct, Jaira. That's exactly correct. And then Sophia asks, will concave always show upside down or only when it's under the principal axis? Will concave always show upside down or only when it's under the principal axis? I'm not sure what you mean by that, Sophia. Like, will the image of a concave mirror always be upside down? Yeah, only if uh, the point of intersection of those reflected rays is under the principal axis. If it's above the principal axis, then it'll be right side up. But again, once you head to explore learning and you do that gizmo after uh, office hours, you'll hopefully start to have a better appreciation and understanding of, because uh, you'll be able to move all the different objects. Yeah, in concave, but we're talking about convex right now. Okay, let's do another example, shall we? This time I'm going to draw the object super duper close to the mirror. We'll see what happens. Okay. So again, I'm still dealing with this convex mirror, right? I'm still dealing with this convex mirror. And now we have an object that's very, 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 very close. Oops. Sorry, let me. Okay. So another example. I'm still dealing with this convex mirror. Now, this time, our object is very, very, very close to the mirror. So what I'm going to do again is I'm going to draw my first incident ray.
from the top of the object. And I know it's not quite on the top. For some reason, my iPad doesn't want to register it. Oh, there, perfect. OK, so top of the object. And we know we know it's going to go through F. Good heavens. There we go. Oh, no. Here we go. I can do it. Nope. Still got. Nope. There we go. Oh, nope. There. Oh. Why am I having trouble with this today? Oh, dear. That's a circle. All right. There we go. So there's my incident ray, the direction it's traveling. And I know my reflected ray is going to go through F. So there's a little cheat, and this is how I do it. You can use a ruler and a pencil when you're doing your diagrams, obviously. But I just draw my line straight through F. Oh, it's got to be better because it's got to actually touch that incident ray. There we go. Nope, still not there yet. Here we go. Why is my stylist doing this today? Of all the days. There. OK, so it goes through F. And then I'm just going to continue it. Da, da, da. Oh my gosh, what is happening? All right. So now I can use my eraser, because you're going to be doing it in pencil, just to create that dotted line. So I know that that virtual ray is going through F. All right, so there's my first one. OK, my second incident ray. Same thing, but instead of it going parallel to the principal axis, I'm going to have it go right through F. All right, so you'd line your ruler up, and E, because it's a mirror, you know it's not going to go directly through F, so you can have it stop. Oh, dear. Stop there. There's our incident ray. And then our reflected ray, we know, is going to travel through or parallel to the principal axis. And we can create our dotted line again. And so now we have the exact placement of our image. OK, I know, Ryan, you said you wanted me to go over step two again. So I'm just going to draw. I'm just going to draw the second step on how I got my incident ray and my reflected ray, OK? And for those of you still following along, excellent. So the key thing you have to realize here is that we can't actually draw this reflected ray, or sorry, this incident ray, directly through. But I can just use my ruler to line it up if I had one. My app does it for me. I would just use my ruler to line it up so that way that the light ray from the top of the object goes through F. So there's my ruler. But instead of drawing that line all the way through, I'm going to stop at the mirror, right? If that line kept going, if that line kept going, it would go right through F. But it doesn't. It hits the mirror there, and then it reflects. And because it follows those same rules that we looked at yesterday, we're going to see that reflected ray if I can get it there properly. We're going to see that reflected ray travel parallel to the principal axis, right? But it's not, right? Recall, it's not. Uh oh. We don't actually use this as our reflected ray. We have to draw our reflected ray. Bam. Like that. Because again, it's hitting a mirror, right? Anything that hits a mirror. It's going to reflect it and bounce it back. But we use that dotted line to help us determine where the image will be. All righty. So let's see. Uh, questions. Is there a third step? No. You only need to pick two incident rays and two reflected rays to help you determine where the image is. So you never need to do a third that third option. But if you wanted to, if you wanted to, recall what happens in that third option or in that third step. So let me just clean this up a bit for you all. In that third step or in that third rule, if you will, 
What happens is we get our incident ray that travels directly through C. So I'm going to make a big, broad, sweeping one just to, but you would get your ruler and you would line it up nicely. Okay, so it goes through C. What happens when a light ray, that incident ray, goes through the C or circumcenter? It bounces right straight back. So instead of going right through, it's going to bounce right straight through back. And again, we can use our dotted line. I'm doing a bad job of it, but we would use our dotted line here to help us determine where that object is. But again, you only need to use two rays in order to determine that. Okay. So that's all I got for today with regards to my actual lesson lesson. I'm more than happy to answer questions and do more examples now, but I'm just going to stop the recording. Where does that go? Stop recording. Oh.